Let me start with a simple question. How many of us actually know and comprehend the meaning of the word well-being? I'm pretty sure we must have all heard the word multiple times before. So, let's see a show of hands. How many of us actually understand the meaning of the word well-being? For me, the word well-being can be compared to a beautifully well-knitted fabric woven from diverse threads of our life experiences. Each thread contributing to the overall pattern of happiness and fulfillment. What is the initial thought that comes up to your mind when you hear the term well-being? For me, the definition of well-being has constantly shifted with my experiences until one day I realized that it was all interconnected. I am Adira, a typical teenage girl attempting to navigate through the fleeting days of my adolescence. During grades 6 and 7, well-being purely meant physical health to me. The global pandemic forced us into a lockdown, confining us to our homes for nearly two years. Everywhere I turned, on social media, the newspapers, even conversations with friends, family, there were constant reminders about the need for staying healthy. Public health messages were out everywhere, emphasizing the importance of a balanced diet and staying fit and mental resilience to combat the challenges of isolation. These messages left a lasting impression on me. As a result, my definition of well-being at that time was closely rooted in maintaining my physical health, staying active, eating healthy and all that. However, in the midst of my quest for physical health, my friends and I sought a way to stay engaged and connected. Enter AIMS, our pandemic era masterpiece. Armed with webcams and an overabundance of enthusiasm, we embarked on a journey of virtual glory. We were an event hosting organization. And our events, they were anything but polished. Imagine a science fair where your science experiments could have been mistaken for science fiction and a singing competition where your off-key renditions could have been the soundtrack to a comedic masterpiece. We spent endless hours on Zoom, meticulously planning each detail, occasionally sparring over which event theme would be slightly less ridiculous and debating upon which virtual background would be slightly less embarrassing. The result? A modest turnout of 10 attendees with 6 of them being our very own club members. But However, in those cringy moments of virtual chaos, I discovered a new paradigm of well-being. These quirky escapades taught me that well-being isn't just about maintaining your physical health. It is about weaving joy and connection into the fabric of your lives. Finding humor in the midst of chaos and staying connected is essential for your overall emotional and mental well-being. And among all these friends, I found a serendipitous connect with my best friend, whose constant presence turned those cringy moments of virtual chaos into a cherished chapter of our lives. Our experience with AIMS is a testament to the idea that if you can laugh heartily at your own digital missteps, you're not just surviving, you're thriving in the true essence of well-being. Then came a major change in my life. I moved to a purely residential school seeking change and hoping to find myself after two years of isolation. I found myself missing my family deeply. So, my definition of well-being at that time was closely tied to the social paradigm of well-being as I longed for the comfort and support of my family. Additionally, I also felt an intense need to prove myself in this new environment, bringing the intellectual paradigm of well-being to the forefront. However, the stress and pressure of it all took a toll on my physical health and I fell ill. Returning to this amazing school in the beginning of 9th grade was definitely a turning point in my life. The transition was overwhelming, chaotic and honestly scary. But then, as days progressed, I began to fall in love with grade 9. During this journey, I formed deep and meaningful connections with two incredible people who brought immense joy and pleasure into my life. I cherished them deeply, much like family, and our bond was something I held in the highest regard. They were like the two eyes of my soul, equally important and irreplaceable. But we've all heard that trios don't work out, and 
life took a difficult turn and I faced the painful realization that I had to let go of one of them. The heartbreak was immense. It felt like a part of me was lost. In simpler terms, it was like misplacing your phone only a million times worse. In those months of healing is when I learned the true essence of the social paradigm of well-being. The love and support I got from my best friend helped me find and rebuild strength within myself. That is when I truly understood that it is the love, care and understanding that we share that truly nourish our soul. During challenging times, I found solace in quiet connection and deeper reflection within myself. I began to explore the power of mindfulness, meditation, the impact of reflection and not gonna lie, the power of sleep. The ability to drift into a whole new world of dreams, literally whenever I wanted to, gave me a sense of spiritual awareness and inner peace. Let's be honest, who all loves the idea of escaping reality and going into a world of dreams where you can be whoever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. That is what sleep did to me. That is what dreams did to me. This spiritual journey became an essential part of my well-being. Throughout these experiences, I also learned the power of resilience. Facing the pain of losing a close friend, navigating the challenges of a new school environment, and managing the stress and pressure of extracurricular academic setbacks all demanded a great deal of emotional resilience. Each setback taught me valuable lessons about coping with adversity and bouncing back even stronger than I ever really was, highlighting the resilience paradigm of well-being. As I reflect upon this journey, I realize that well-being isn't just about being happy, healthy or even successful. It is about the harmonious confluence of our social connections, emotional well-being, physical health and mental awareness. These relationships and experiences have shaped who I am today, making me appreciate the intricate web of well-being and its profound impact on our lives today. Understanding and nurturing each aspect can help us achieve a more holistic sense of well-being. The state of happiness is ultimately, the state of well-being is ultimately what makes you happy, what makes you satisfied, what makes you feel proud, and most importantly, what makes you feel comfortable and honored being just who you are. However, fun and happiness can be vastly distinguished between each other. In the past year, I had taken some decisions in the name of fun that had ultimately concluded by taking an adverse toll on my mental health, which is a story for another time. But then, that is when I learned to express my inner self. That is when I learned that sharing of your burdens is when we find the true strength to heal, grow and glow. There is one specific example I would like to talk to you about today. Let us all imagine we're going on a camping trip. Or we have pretty heavy backpacks. Carrying the backpack for 3 or 4 minutes wouldn't make much of a difference. But what about 30 to 40 minutes? Even though the weight of the bag doesn't change, the longer you hold it, the heavier it's going to get. Life is as simple as that. We need to learn to drop our bags or at least let someone else help you drop your bags because as long as you bottle up your emotions, it is going to push you to a completely emotionally paralyzed and unavailable state. We must realize that mental and physical health are equals and we must start treating them, treating them like they are equals. Even a little kid knows that from waking up, we brush our teeth, we use soap to clean ourselves, we wash our hands, we do exercise, we eat healthy food. We do so much to tend to our physical health. But how much do we do? And what do we do to tend to our mental health? It is not wrong to visit the therapist once in a while because we they are already equals. We must uh, treat them with the attention and respect that they deserve equally. It is sharing of our burdens is not an act of courage, but a beautiful is not an act of weakness, but a beautiful act of courage. And then I began expanding my horizons, sailing beyond shores unknown to craft fresh ties and embrace forgotten ones. I did my best to restore my major connections from the major events of my timeline. And to my astonishment, I found myself among a beautifully knit 
graceful ring of companionship, healing me and navigating me towards the waters of noble living. I started my journey of unveiling my inner empathy towards the people I loved, to reap what I sowed, and truth be told, the results were mind-boggling. Who knew caring about the people you love can be so rewarding? I should honestly tell it much sooner. One day, as I was pondering upon my childhood, it hit me hard just then that the younger intellectual aspect of Adira wouldn't be proud of how much intellectually evolved I am right now. There is one specific example that I would like to place emphasis upon. I was in fourth grade. A guest teacher had come to our class to conduct a session for us about the 12 attributes that the PYP learners focused on. The session was very interactive and interesting according to me because I consequently kept bombarding her with questions, answers and doubts. But in the end, the teacher's comments included that, it, that the class could have been a much more active participant and she congratulated me for making the class lively. That is when it hit me. Where did she go? Where did that Adira go? When did the curiosity in me die? When did my insecurities get the best of me? Engaging in intellectually stimulating activities can lead to a slower cognitive decline. This is said by Nas the National Institute of Health by a research conducted by them. Thus began my journey of questions. I began asking, seeking and exploring the beautifully crafted art of knowledge. And to my astonishment, the amount of knowledge I gained was insurmountable giving me a deeper assurance that I am worthwhile and that I can do it. Most probably, I think my brain expanded two or three sizes this year. To focus on the resilience paradigm of well-being, I managed to learn the ropes of maintaining a positive outlook on things, to seek light over shadows, to expect negativity, to look for negativity, to work against negativity, to create positivity. I wrap myself around the warm blanket of self-compassion, love and confidence through times cold and dry. As we direct our benign focus upon social, emotional, mental and physical well-being, we must extend our care to the environment because our own well-being is a domino effect of how soundly the world is evolving around us. The synergy of all our actions create a drastic effect on her health. Thus, as the saying goes, we do not need to leave distances in order to nurture her. Rather, just start with dainty steps such as conserving the electricity, preserving water uh, and much more offensive approaches. Despite all these profound realizations, there is still one paradigm where I am a huge work in progress, the physical paradigm of well-being. The idea of physical exercise, staying active, eating healthy, all sounds great in theory. But in practice, my dedication is as reliable as a weather forecast in a storm. My commitment and my relationship with exercise right now is like that of a celebrity crush. It is always on my mind but rarely gets any real attention. My, my commitment to the couch right now feels like a full-time profession because TV shows and snacks keep getting in the way of me getting out of my couch. And my dad on the other hand manages to seize every opportunity to remind me that a healthy body is a healthy mind and that I should be using my free time to exercise not to binge watch TV shows. And if I had one rupee for every time he's asked me to go for a run, I would have enough money to hire a personal trainer for me to do the running for me. The other day, when we were going to Andaman for a school trip, he managed to convince me that for every one hour of physical workout I did, he would add 1000 rupees to my pocket money. But guess what? I only got 2000 rupees for the hard work I did. P.S. I still did two hours of physical workout, which is a lot. However, I've come to realize that to achieve a more balanced sense of well-being, I must stop using the excuse that I'm conserving energy for my laziness and start embracing physical activity. So, here's to setting alarms for morning jogs and actually waking up, swapping chips for carrots occasionally, maybe, and that accepting while perfection is overrated, striving for a healthier me is definitely a goal worth pursuing.
even if it means fewer lazy afternoons and more awkward stretching stretching sessions plus if it keeps my dad from making up more creative excuses for me to exercise that's a win win situation as the curtain falls up on this afternoon if there's one pivotal fact i would like to accentuate it is that be yourself be who you are don't change who you are for anyone or anything under any circumstance trust that the universe will make better things come your way balance is the key to jumping over the trials set by the journey of life and unlocking doors to triumphant endeavors balance is the most pristine way to perfection